Hey, so I made a video. Uh, I'm assuming it's the one I'm gonna post right before this one, so hopefully I'll remember to do it in right order, but I made a video about, um, with some examples of persisting um, and you know what that means. Just some very basic examples of how you know, when something goes wrong in 3D or you your rational mind believes that the thing in your 3D is the thing that you know is gonna happen and then it turns out it's not, you know what I mean? Um, that shakes everybody's faith. They're like, I believed that this guy that showed up was the guy for me because you know, I know I'm gonna find the right thing and then this guy showed up and he ended up ditching me, what the hell? Like I believed it and it didn't happen. There's a difference between knowing and then what your rational mind then does with the information it has available to it. And often you can believe something is going to happen rationally uh, that is actually not going to happen because that has nothing to do with how any of this works. Um, so I made this video with some examples about how you have to persist through the thing you thought was going to happen, the thing that you thought was the fulfillment of your knowing, of your desire, um, turning out not to be what you thought it was and why you have to do that in order to get the thing you want. Um, so I also wanted to make a video about what it means to live in the end. Um, in my experience, uh, what that means, because it kind of goes, it, it does go hand in hand with those types of examples. Um, persisting through 3D events that uh, could very easily completely rob you of all of your faith if you're not careful and totally change your rational mind about what you think is possible. Um, those are the things that really have to be uh, navigated through. And then the rest of the time when you don't have some situation arising in 3D that might, uh, you know, sway your sense of knowing that what you want is going to happen. Um, the rest of the time, you, I think, have to live in a certain way. And I don't mean that in the Wallace Waddles, I mean, I mean in a particular way. I think that um, the rest of the time living in the end, uh, you sort of need to um, deliberately in a way, sort of consciously in a way, decide that every action that you take is going to be towards that end. Um, and all of your thoughts are going to be the right type of thoughts for the thing you want to come about. And sometimes I think you just have to sort of say that to yourself and then let that happen in a way that you can't necessarily anticipate. But for me, um, I'll use money as an example because this is my best example of living in the end for a really long time, you know, while my outer circumstances changed from being broke um, and not knowing how I was going to stop being broke to the point I'm at now, which is um, quite decidedly not broke at all. Um, the whole thing, the whole thing played out over about 15 years. And part of not being broke for me was wanting to have achieved success. Um, that was how I wanted to not be broke. I, I have never been and never will be open to the idea of winning the lottery because to me, you know, what I've done with my life, I could literally sit, sit down and have a chat with Mark Cuban and tell him what I did with my business and I would feel proud of myself. Whereas if I sat down with Mark Cuban, the billionaire, and was like, yeah, I've got $300 million because I won the lottery. It's just like, I don't know, that doesn't do anything for me. You know, I wanted to be able to feel like I achieved something, like I did something. So for me, that involved a longer bridge, um, than it might if you just wanted to get money. But I'm just putting that out there because every time I talk about how long it took me to make money, people are like, what, couldn't you have done it faster? It's just like, come on, man. Um, <laughs> but so, you know, um, part of getting to the point where I was well off financially um, involved deliberately making some decisions that I felt would be those of someone who had money in in the spirit, um, not necessarily to the degree uh, that a person who had money would make. But like, for example, um, I was always donating to charity. Uh, I like to donate directly to people. I like to do things to help people directly. So like for a long time, um, I would buy groceries for people on Reddit. Uh, um, 
you know, uh, one of my friends um, had like no money to buy Christmas presents for her kids. So I bought like all of her kids Christmas presents, even though I wasn't, you know, when I look back at how I was doing financially when I did that, I really couldn't quite afford it. Like it was just to the point of being like, ow, ouch, you know, like that hurt a little to spend that money. But I always did that um, from the perspective of I can do this because, you know, this is my vote of confidence to myself and to the creative powers that be that are aiding me that I believe. I I don't, you know, my response to this like pain at having spent a little more money than what I, you know, is comfortable for me. I'm doing that on purpose that that's going towards the idea that I can afford that, not, you know, then experiencing that pain and feeling like, man, I couldn't afford that. I did that kind of stuff all the time. I was always pushing myself, you know, outside of my comfort zone with how much I was willing to give to other people. And same thing with just like stuff for myself, you know, um, of course I had, you know, if you're broke and you want to not be broke, um, there's just some good world advice, you know, stop blowing your money on stupid shit would be a good one. But occasionally, um, those old like, tendencies to blow money would would sort of resurface I'd catch myself you know uh grabbing something that would be stupid for me to blow money on at that time and then I would not do that thing but I would deliberately buy myself some small luxury that again was maybe a little bit more than I was totally comfortable with basically saying this is my indication to myself that I am on the path towards this not even being a concern. I am buying this deliberately towards that end. I did stuff like that all the time. And uh, that that's just like outward actions that I took, some little examples of things that I did. But um, other stuff, like uh, back when my ex and I were still living in an apartment together, um, I started looking at houses uh, online, you know, because we wanted to buy a house. And so I was looking at houses and there was never ever a thought of, I'll never be able to afford that or anything like that. In my mind, I was simply preparing for the inevitability that we would be purchasing a house soon, you know, fairly soon. In 2011, I started really looking at houses and, and trying to figure out what we would want and how much it would be and all that stuff. And uh, at that time, I mean, I, I was, the, um, we were riding on my ex's credit score because my credit was completely shot. Um, his credit score wasn't that great and we didn't have like any savings and everything we had was being invested in the business that we were growing at the time. And just like um, the ability to get approved for a mortgage back then that was just non-existent. And within two years that had all changed. I mean, we had, um, we, by the time we bought a house, we accumulated the money for kind of a big down payment in like three months. So that's how fast things can change. And my advice would be to always look towards the future, absolutely knowing it's gonna happen. Like feel like you're preparing for the future. You know, I just wanna be ready for this cause I know I'm gonna get this. So, you know, um, and really uh, to add on to that, uh, the things that you do to live in the end like that, um, taking actions from the mental place of having the thing or the life you are, you know, you want already having that. Um, I, this is a hard one to say because what's realistic for me and what's realistic for you, um, you know, might be two completely different things. But for me, I wasn't, you know, when I was looking for a house, I wasn't looking at some, uh, you know, $15 million lakefront estate in one of the top zip codes in the country, I was looking at the place that I figured we would probably move um, that was acceptable to us, that had affordable housing. You know, I, um, I'm i not really sure why advice is ever given to people to do things like that. You know, if you're sitting in a one bedroom apartment, the odds that you have the mental discipline and mastery to um, be living in uh, a 10 bedroom mansion in like five years uh, is not, you know, slim to none. Of course, there are people like that. We've all heard about them. 
is it you? I don't know. Um, if it is, then you probably will just be like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. For the rest of you, then hopefully that helps because I can't imagine if I had been street dreaming about some mansion when I had like $5,000 in the bank. Um, I, I don't know, you know, I don't even really do that now from where I'm at now. Um, I just, I think I, I personally like success over, um, you know, going to, you know, going too big. I like slow and steady wins the race versus just, you know, trying to shoot into the stratosphere on your first try. That's just me. And you can do with that, with that what you will. But for the most part, you know, I embodied the state of a person that had money. Even when I didn't have it, I felt like I was the type of person that did. It, it felt like being a temporarily embarrassed millionaire. Um, I just felt like, you know, no, money belongs with me. I, I did these little things outwardly to say, hey, look, money, you know, I'm good with this. Money belongs with me. I, I'm not afraid. Uh, I'm not afraid that if I spend this money that I'm going to need it later. I'm going to go ahead and spend $300 on groceries for this person that, that needs it way more than me because I can because I'm not afraid. I know I'm going to have more. Um, that was the kind of attitude I had almost all the time. And, you know, it's depending on what area of your life you're trying to do this in. It's not always that easy. Um, it certainly gets easier the more you do it, like anything. But um, I hope that that, you know, helps something. I can really only speak to my own experience with this. That's what living in the end was for me. I mean, I truly lived as the person that had the things that I knew I was gonna get. I, I lived as that person mentally all the time um, to the point that it made my ex pretty uncomfortable. I think sometimes sometimes some of my spending risks were um, he was kind of dragged along on that um, un, unwillingly. I think he would have much rather just like saved every penny, but um, he and I have a very different mentality on money and money's kind of his thing. He kind of has a hang up with that, so not sorry. Um, yeah, I, I just, I hope that made some sense. I think people really need some examples and real world examples of how you do these things that everybody just talks about in general terms. You have to live in the end. You know, it's like, well, what the hell does that mean? Um, how do you live in the end of something that you don't even understand? And for me, it was just kind of like pushing it a little further, living mentally, knowing it would happen, trying to do things that, um, you know, I thought or knew that people, um, who have money do like being generous you know i have a lot of examples of well-off people that are generous so generosity was a big thing to me that i feel like brought money to me um charity uh and just knowing what i wanted and knowing that i would get it which is always kind of at the bottom of all of this uh i don't know i hope that that did something for somebody 